Hey, need a ride to school? Currently, there are around 427,000 school buses in the U.S. alone. The very first school buses started out as horse-drawn carriages all the way back around 1886. They were called school trucks, and most people didn't take them. Walking to school was the norm, and these early buses only picked up those students who lived super far away. Nowadays, school buses are a bit more technical, and they have a bunch of hidden tricks up their sleeve. Buses have sleeves? To make sure your ride to school is as safe as possible. Ever notice that weird long arm that comes from the front of the bus? It's there to protect and help students as they cross the road in front of the school bus. But unlike traffic lights and other safety features, these arms aren't actually required, and it varies from state to state. Here are all the states where those arms are required, including Texas, New Jersey, and Florida. In other states, it's pretty much down to the local school or bus contractors to decide whether they add the bar or not. The bar pops out from the front bumper on the right-hand side of the bus, right by the door. They only appear when the door is opening for loading and unloading to form a protective barrier from the road. The device doesn't let passengers walk straight in front of the bus when they want to cross the road. Instead, it forces them to walk several feet in front of it before they can begin to cross. This means that they have more visibility to spot oncoming cars. It also means that the bus driver can see them as they're crossing the road. This helps to avoid a common blind spot that's immediately in front of the bus close to the bumper. Because the front of the bus is so long, the driver can't see anyone crossing in this area, which can be really dangerous. When the students have safely crossed the road thanks to the help of the driver and the bus's handy long arm, the arm retracts back in. It would be super impractical to drive along with a massive bar sticking out of the bus, you think? The safety bars first became a thing back in 1992, when they were installed on all buses in Washington. Typically, they're made from wire and plastic and are painted the same yellow color as the bus. Um, Speaking of school bus color, red is the easiest to see, and most people associate it with caution. The red color doesn't get scattered easily either, and it can be seen from far away. Instead, school buses are yellow, as it has an almost luminous glow to it. This makes it easier to stand out in dark lights and in fog. Because the bus's main purpose is to take students to school, it's often still dark in the morning, especially during the cold winter months. That's why it makes sense to use yellow paint, not red, as it will actually make the buses more noticeable on the road, making them safer. The black lettering also stands out way easier on yellow than red. Plus, yellow is easier to spot in your peripheral vision. This is the fancy term for when you see something out of the corner of your eye without looking directly at it. You're one and a quarter times more likely to spot a yellow object out of the corner of your eye than the same object painted red. The official color is called National School Bus Glossy Yellow, and it's actually an orange-yellow mix. Buses colored like this are only found in the US and Canada, though. In Japan, they have super cool buses, including ones shaped like animals, such as cats, pandas, and dogs. They even have buses in the shape of your favorite characters. For example, Pikachu, Snoopy, and Hello Kitty. American school buses surprisingly can't go that fast, which is another handy safety feature. They can reach a max speed of around 65 miles per hour, although local speed limit laws are usually way lower for them. One guy, American Paul Stender, wanted to see just how fast a school bus could go. He added a jet engine, which boosted its speed to a whopping 367 miles per hour. Buckle your seatbelts! Oh, wait! Bus companies go to all this trouble to make the journeys as safe as possible. Still, there aren't any seatbelts in the buses. Seatbelts are designed to protect us in the event of a car accident and can ultimately save our lives. But as weird as it sounds, having seatbelts on a school bus won't actually make it safer. 
Traveling by school bus is actually 40 times safer than traveling by car. And some experts even say that school buses are the safest form of travel out of them all, including planes, ships, and trains. This is all down to something called compartmentalization. It's sort of like eggs in an egg carton put in a divided box. This basically means that all the seats are situated close to each other and have high backs which are padded. If an accident did happen and a student got thrown forward, they'd only move a tiny distance. They would unlikely injure their head, as if they banged it, it would be on the back of the padded seat. The padding would almost act like an airbag. The official law is that if a school bus weighs over 10,000 pounds, they don't have to have seat belts. Some states still do put seat belts on their buses. These half-dozen states are California, New York, Florida, New Jersey, Texas, and Louisiana. If the bus is under 10,000 pounds, they're legally required to add seat belts. Another crucial safety factor is that passengers sit way above ground level on a bus. This means that if another vehicle collided with the bus, the impact would happen under the seats. Those black lines on the side of the bus aren't just an aesthetic feature either. They're actually made of metal and are put there to strengthen the walls of the bus. If a collision was to happen, these added metal bars would absorb most of the force, protecting the passengers inside. This also means that the crash won't affect large areas. They're positioned strategically, too. The bottom bar is at floor level, the middle one matches the bottom of the seats, and the top one is at the height of either the top of the seats or the bottom of the window. In the event of an accident, they also give firefighters a better idea of where to cut, meaning they can get inside to offer help faster. School buses also have grill covers in order to keep the diesel engine warm in winter in areas with extreme temperatures. This massively reduces the chance of the bus conking out and stopping in the middle of a busy road. Some school buses also have a black hood, not a yellow one, to match the rest of the vehicle. This is because when the sun is too bright, the yellow one can reflect a lot of light, which causes glare to the cars in front. More importantly, the glare shines up onto the driver, which can make it really difficult for them to see their surroundings, and it can be very distracting. While some states make it a requirement for buses to have this black hood, others just cover the hood with an anti-glare substance. They call the new shade lusterless yellow. Ooh. The final bus safety precaution is that drivers open their doors and windows at railroad crossings. This is so they can see and hear more clearly if a train is coming. That makes sense. They should also turn off any distracting sounds, such as the radio or loud fans and that extra loud fourth grader back there, so they can hear perfectly, as well as switching on their hazard warning lights. These rules apply to all school buses in the US as well as Canada. Once the train is gone and the coast is clear, the driver shuts his door and crosses the tracks. <laughs>